Welcome back. In this video, we'll continue looking at our dislocation velocity simulation that we've done in LAMPS using molecular dynamics. This time, we'll analyze and post-process our simulation using Oviedo. So first of all, let's open up Oviedo. If you don't have it, you can easily download it from Oviedo.org. Once you do, open it up and go to File and Load File. Here, we can load any of our LAMPS dump files that we've created. So I'm going to start with this dump.minimize. This is the output that uh, was written right after the atom positions were uh, minimized to their lowest energy uh, state uh, inside our script. So I'm going to make this one uh, the full screen so that we can look at it closer by clicking this button down here, this full screen button. And that way we can just see what we want to see better. Now, right now, you can't actually see much because all the atoms are white. So we want to actually color them by something so that we can see our dislocation. But what are we going to color them by? One option is by the center symmetry parameter. And you can add that by going up to Add Modification, and under Analysis, you can find Centrosymmetry Parameter. Now, the Centrosymmetry Parameter is basically a measure of how close to a perfect lattice each atom is. A value of zero means all of its neighboring atoms are at exactly where they should be for a perfect crystal structure. A very high value means that the neighboring atoms are in a very bad position for a perfect crystal structure. So now if we mouse over any of these atoms we can see down at the bottom that each of them have a center symmetry value associated with them. But we would like to be able to see, uh, we'd like to be able to visualize the atoms by that center symmetry value. So we're going to color code them by that. So back underneath add modification under coloring we're going to add color coding and now it automatically sets it to center symmetry but we could color code it by any of these other things as well we're going to leave it by at center symmetry and now we can see that there are some atoms with high center symmetry right here in the middle and this corresponds to our dislocation that we've created I'm going to set these uh, range values to something um, simpler and now you can see, you can really see that dislocation part pop out. Okay, so now let's look at what happens when we add temperature. So let's open up the dump.equilibration file. And when you see this dialog box pop up, we're going to click, click Replace Selected. What this will do is allow our modifications to stay, but just change the file that we're operating on. And so now we have a new file brought up but we're going to keep the same modifiers. Now another thing about this new file is it actually has multiple time steps in the same file. So underneath input click on this dump.equilibration and then down here at the bottom underneath lamps dump click on file contains time series. Now it recognizes that there are actually two different time steps saved in this file. So it has 0 and 1. So the 0 is at the beginning and this one is after it's been equilibrated. And so you can see that adding temperature actually adds some randomness uh, in the coloring to these atoms out here. So this is due to those thermal vibrations. So they're shifting the atoms out of their most perfect crystal structure position. However, you notice that the atoms down here at the bottom or at the top are still in their perfect crystal uh, position. That's because we've only added temperature to these in the middle. For the ones on the top and the bottom, we've actually set their forces to zero in the x and y directions so that they don't move. Um, and so that's actually made them, uh, so we've actually basically fixed them. And so that's why you get that coloring. Okay, so now we can see this is the state that's actually going to be the beginning of when we start adding our, uh, our shear stress. So next, let's open up this dump.shear.unwrap. And this is the file that actually contains the atoms as we're adding that, as we're applying that shear stress. So again, click Replace Selected. We want to keep all of those modifiers. And here we go. And again, go down, click on the name of the file, 
and under lamp stump, file contains time series, and now you can see I have about 99 different time steps. And if you click play, it will cycle through those frames and you can actually see this dislocation moving. And that's what we're looking for. Now we want to calculate how fast is this dislocation moving. So the first thing that we're going to need is the position of this dislocation. But how do we decide where the dislocation is? Well, one thing would be nice, and this is just for visualization, but of course also to calculate the position, is let's eliminate everything that's not a dislocation. And let's just look at the dislocation itself. So how are we going to do that? Now one option by looking at this would be to eliminate all of the atoms that have a center symmetry lower than like four and a half, because all these are pretty high, but these are pretty low. And that would be one way of doing it. However, we're going to look at it in a different way. So under add modification, we're going to add a polyhedral template matching modifier. So what this does is it looks at each atom and it decides what crystal structure each atom is in. So uncheck this color coding and now you'll actually see that it's added color to each atom based on its structure. So you can see all this green is this perfect FCC or this uh, FCC lattice and this red is HCP which is your, uh, your dislocation and there's some blues there at the end um, that are just kind of in between. And then we have these white ones on the faces uh, that are no crystal structure because they have no neighbors on the outside here. All right, so this is good. Now we really just want to look at what this dislocation is. So let's try to get rid of all of these green atoms and these white atoms. So one way to do that is under add modification, under selection, we're going to create an expression select modifier. And in here, we're going to say, let's select everything with a structure type. You see it pops up there. Structure type equal to 1. So I know that 1 corresponds to FCC because underneath this modifier, over here, you can see the ID of 1 for FCC, 2 for HCP, etc. Okay, so that almost got all of them. Now we still are left just with these white ones on the top. So let's say it has to be equal to 1 or, which is these two straight lines, or we can say that the position of the atom, position in the y direction, is greater than, let's say, 100. So that'll get those ones on the top. And now for the ones at the bottom, we could say less than about 15. And now we've got rid of the top and the bottom ones, or at least we've selected the top and the bottom ones. Now once we've selected them, we can go to our modifier list, and we can add a delete selected particles under modification. Boom! Now we're just left with the atoms that are in our dislocation core. And you can rotate that around, and you can see what those atoms look like. I'm going to switch this back to the top view. And there you have it. So this is what our dislocation is. And so we could presumably average the positions of these atoms, and that would be our dislocation position. And in fact, that's what the post-processing script that we're going to use does. But we're going to do this outside of Oviedo in Python, but we're going to use Oviedo to run that Python. Let me show you how that works. So first, we're going to add modification and we're going to add a Python script modifier. So this will actually run any Python script that you want and operate on the current state of Oviedo. So it will be able to operate on all the atoms and the atoms properties. And right now you can see it just has a, a very uh, standard definition of your function. So basically anything that you want to do you assign to this modify function and it runs this modify function on each time, each frame that you uh, iterate to. So you give it the frame number, it has an input structure and an output structure. So we're going to actually put a script in here that will allow us to calculate that dislocation position. And we're going to get that script from the ICME website. 
So if you're not there already, go to icme.hpc.msstate.edu and then you can put into the search bar lamps dislocation mobility and you should get to this page here. Once you do, come down here underneath environment setup and look for this post processing script and you'll want this single defect velocity in Ovidos. This page will show you some of the basic uh, ways of using this uh, analysis script. And honestly, the most, the easiest way to do this is by using a command line utility known as Ovidos. And you can just run the script by giving it the uh, dump file. However, because we've already started with the GUI, we're going to use uh, this second method down here. So you can see we've added the polyhedral template matching modifier, we've added the expression select modifier, and we've added the delete selected particles modifier. So now all we're left with is this Python script modifier. So first of all, we need to copy this source code into just a text file. So copy all of this and create a new text file for it and save that. And try to save it right where you're, um, right in your simulation directory. So for me, that's going to be in D, research, dislocation, and it'll be right there. And so I'm going to call it dis mobility.py and make sure you save it as all types so that it'll have this .py extension because this is a Python script. All right, so now that you've got that saved, uh, scroll back up to, to the top and you can see right here at the top there's this note about using Oviedo in the Python script modifier. And basically we can just copy this, these lines here, and use that in the modifier so that we can use this code here. So go back to Oviedo and copy that in. And let me show you what this does. So it's going to import this OS module and change directory to your simulation directory. So change this line here to where, wherever your simulation directory is. And this is just so that Oviedo can find your Python script that we're going to use. Then import your Python script, so I've called mine dismobility, so import that as some name. I'm just going to use dm. Now we want to assign this modify, so this is going to be a function, and we're going to assign it to this function that's within this Python script, this git dislocation position. And then we're going to run this initialized data. So this will actually allow us to uh, run, run this and get the dislocation position on each frame and we'll be able to calculate the velocity from that. The last thing you need to do is make sure this this number here corresponds to the number of frames that you have in your output file and you can see that we have 99 total time steps counting zero and so 99 is good. So once you've done that you can click that play and so it's saved that script and it will use that now. So go back to here click play and let it run across all of your frames. So as it's doing this, it's running that Python script and calculating that dislocation position at every frame. And then it's writing a file as well that we'll be able to use to calculate the dislocation velocity. Once it finishes, stop it and open up a file explorer and go to your simulation directory you should see a file named position versus time. And if you open it up, you'll see this list of values. And this is basically the position of your dislocation over time. We're gonna copy, we're not gonna use anything here. This is it starting over. So we're just gonna copy all of these. We're gonna paste this into Excel so that we can visualize it. We're gonna paste it here. And there you go. Now you can see this line and this is the dislocation uh, position. So you could fit a line to this. I would ignore these little uh, bumps. This is due to some of the noise in the, um, in the movement, and that's pretty artificial, so don't try to fit a line to all those. But you can see this is a pretty straight line if you ignore those bumps. And so you fit a straight line to that, and you have your dislocation velocity as the slope of that line. And so with that, we've calculated the dislocation velocity in lamps using molecular dynamics. Thanks for watching.